see what she was wearing? It's her fault. She was practically asking for it. Hi, my name is Michelle Anthony, and today I'm here to talk about society's outdated views on how women dress contribute to a culture that underpenalizes the sexual assault while blaming its victims. Now, the culture I'm talking about has a name, and that's rape culture, defined by the Oxford Online Dictionary as society or environment whose prevailing social attitudes have the effect of normalizing or trivializing sexual assault and abuse. Now, this is an issue that society has turned a blind eye towards, seeing as an issue for another day. What we do not realize is that at one point, in the not so far future, this mindset will become immutable, as it scorched our communities and society as a whole, causing trauma, death, terror, fear, loss of loved ones, and so, so much more. The topic I'm addressing is experienced by a unique group of individuals, showing how discrimination and a promiscuous mindset can have a powerful and detrimental impact on the course of history. Sadly, this culture has impacted how we experience life as women, causing fear and guilt to settle in girls' hearts from a very, very young age. Coloring our quality of life itself, we have normalized it to extent where most women think a hundred times before they go out. Are they looking too provocative or the message they may be sending with the way they're dressed? We have built our lives around this culture as it influenced the way we think, talk, and act. This mindset has made us so accustomed to the casual harassment and assault we see daily. Our minds have become so habituated to the sexism, sexual hate crime, sexual objectification we see daily. Sadly, we see it in the media, in the news, and in our everyday lives. Like a disease, this culture has spread so far and wide that we've stopped recognizing its impacts on our social fiber. This is where we need to stop and we need to think, is this the world we want to live in? Do we want to live in a world where young girls stay silent when they're unwillingly blamed? Do we want half of our population to go on not being confident about their body, the way they talk, dress, or act due to the fear of getting harassed or assaulted? Is this the equality and the world we want women to live in? Now, it's important to note that rape culture doesn't just impact women. The phenomenon also impacts men. According to the National Sexual Violence Resource Center, approximately one in every five women are raped, opposed to one in every 71 men who have been raped. While rape culture impacts both men and women, this poses a more significant threat to the female population. And thus, a natural evolution of this mindset is victim blaming. Victim blaming is classified as perpetually blaming a victim for a crime committed against them. It concepts the rather large spectrum of inclusivity. The spectrum can range anywhere from chiding comments about showing too much skin in school or getting told that wearing a short skirt well means that you're asking for it. Due to these outdated views on society of how women dress, we are constantly hypersexualized and often blamed for why rape and assault still occur. Statistics from the RAIN Organization's Justice Department and the Huffington Post have stated how approximately 97% of all rapists in the United States are never incarcerated. This number is terrifying to think about, not only for the victims of assault, but rather the bystanders who live in the fear of being assaulted or harassed. According to these renowned organizations, the most prominent reason for why the victims don't report their assault is because they often feel like if they've played an event or a part in the event itself, and in turn, they are to be blamed. This is often due to the disoriented definition of consent in the world we live in today. Now, true consent can be defined as permission for something to happen or agreement to do something. However, over time, society's built the impression that home dresses, acts, or speaks is an alternative form of consent. After reading about this, photographer Catherine Camberary was absolutely infuriated and took this project to the next level. She decided to take photographs of the clothing worn by survivors of victims of rape and sexual assault. She hoped to show the public that blaming the victim's clothing was redundant and, for lack of words, completely ridiculous. Now, here are some of the photos she took. The picture includes a pair of sweats, a button down, and a sweater, exemplifying how clothing in no way equals consent. Now, this terrible treatment towards victims has become relatively normalized in our current society, viciously contributing to not only rape culture, but rather enhancing mental disorders such as depression, anxiety, PTSD, and suicidal thoughts among those of the victims of harassment and assault. This notion is simply the response to a societal belief and a gender-oriented mindset that prioritizes one gender over the other. And you might be wondering, well, how does this impact us? We're only in high school after all. However, as high schoolers, we are already accustomed to the harassment we see daily. Discrimination between girls and boys continues to exist around us as we hear our peers iterate words aimed at undignifying and objectifying women. Our dress code itself forms the idea that women are sexual objects and that showing too much skin will distract the male students. 
Simply put, society's view on how a woman dresses sexualizes her and restricts bodily autonomy from a very young age, causing damaging long-term effects on an individual's health and overall well-being. Therefore, we must make this topic more acceptable in conversation and remove the taboo around the topic itself. Rather than hiding away and deflecting our attention from the topic, we need to discuss it and take action against it. I have some good news for you. It's the 21st century and we have the resources and the ability to change this narrative and pick apart rape culture once and for all. Some ways we can help eliminate this culture are by first creating a culture of consent. This is vital. If we proactively participate in this new found culture, we can teach others about the importance of consent. And we need to make it clear that a victim's clothing, acting, actions, sobriety, and sexuality are irrelevant in the case of sexual assault and harassment. More stringent laws to hold the offenders accountable will allow us to alter the disparaging rates of rape and assault cases that aren't reported. And lastly, and probably most importantly, we have to eliminate victim blaming. This concept can constantly be seen through the media and news and in our daily lives. And if we continue to normalize the usage of phrases that aim at objectifying, undignifying, and degrading women, we will lead further to continue to shape our lives out of this rape affirming culture. Most importantly, we can spread information about this culture through social media. So as you leave today, I encourage you to research this topic and take a stance against this injustice when you see it. And to remember, if you're a victim, we hear you, we see you, and we do believe you. Thank you.